Howdy, folks, and welcome back to Dead Pit Radio. I'm the Creepy Kentuckian. And I'm Uncle Bill, and how y'all doing? I hope everyone's doing fine out there today. We have a really cool one that we're taking a look at, getting a first look. Right, This is, as of the time that we're recording this, there is no reviews of this at all on the YouTubes. So we may be one of the very first people to uh, do a proper review for this. So that's pretty cool, Uncle Bill. Not not very often do people give us any sort of opportunities at all. So Cineverse and Screambox and all those people, we appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to be taking a look at a film that's been talked about for a long time now and anxiously awaited, and that is the uh, remake of a classic film that I think you and I both loved, uh, Street Trunch. Yeah, and it is Ryan Kruger's kind, kind of his follow-up to um, well, what year Fried, was, Fried Berry. Uh, Fried yeah. Berry was a couple years ago, I think. Something I think like so. Yeah. 2022, maybe 21. Yeah. And uh, highly acclaimed. Everybody was putting over fried berry. We talked about that one as well, back when it came out and everything. So a pretty decent choice, I think to remake or reimagine whatever you want to call it. The 1987 classic street trash, which, you know, like I said, it's a cult movie. I think that. Was it the very first like body melt, like gooey sort of deal like that from the, I, the late eighties? I don't know if it was the first or not, but I know it's probably like one of the most popular of any of them. I mean, there was what there was a uh, slime city. And I'm not sure what year that came out. Um, and there was body melt. Body and I'm melt. not sure what year that came out either. So one of those might've been before street trash, but like, it's probably the most well-known of any of those, I would say. So interestingly, the remake comes out officially tomorrow, November the 19th uh, on Screenbox and digital. So I'm guessing that means streaming everywhere, wherever you you can rent movies and watch them. You can check out Ryan Kruger's brand new version of Street Trash. But today we're going to talk about it because we have already seen it. We want to dive into the movie, give you guys the goods. Does it deliver the goods? Does it deliver the blood, the gut, the baby, the puff, if you will? Or is this some clean trash? Right. Yeah. Are there abscesses and pustules and things exploding and greens and yellows and fluorescence and people's heads and groins blowing off? Yellow blood, purple blood, blue blood, pink blood. It's like Skittles, like they got a bag of Skittles and just taste the rainbow of blood in Street Trash 2024. <laughs> right. But yeah, we're going to dig into it a little bit. Now, this film is set in a futuristic South Africa. I think the synopsis says this is 2050, Uncle Bill. So this is a good nearly 30 years from now uh, in a, you know, almost like, I don't know if it's a post-apocalyptic, but a futuristic society in South Africa which the population consists of primarily extremely rich people and homeless bums. Right. And the mayor has to figure out a way to basically appease all of these voters by figuring out a way to get rid of the homeless people, which in this case means he's got to figure out a way to deliver like a deadly gas and or like food substance that turns everybody into goo. Sl you remember when you, back in the day when you was a kid, you poured salt on slugs, you know what that, yeah. that that's kind of what the mayor sets up with this uh, gas that he has created to take out all of the bums in South Africa and the entire cast of the movie is homeless people bums right that's what right. they're playing right it's either like one or two things it's kind of like a land of the dead type scenario right they're either like you're following the people that are on the outskirts of all of this that are kind of like the lower class homeless people things like that but then like every now and then they'll give you like a glimpse inside of the the rich people and like what they're doing and the, and the, the rich and the Kentians. yeah the government who's definitely like the the bad guys, the heels in this one. 
Right. And the three leads, which, you know, initially they introduced some more people, but you've got Ronald, Chef, and Alex, which Alex is the female of the group, not to confuse people. And you kind of follow, like, I think Alex is a more of a, more or less a newer homeless person. And Chef and Ronald are kind of maybe showing her the way, right? The art of bumming. <laughs> Yeah, I book. guess it's the art that's of bumming. That's a good book for you. Yes, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and that's true. That's the basis of the movie, really. Yeah. There are rival bum gangs and homeless gangs and just all kinds of dangerous stuff that's going on in the futuristic uh, savage streets of uh, South Africa. And yeah. uh, we were talking about this before because South Africa is an English-speaking country. Oddly enough, I think, I think, right. You got me, but I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the, these people talk like they're from Australia. Almost. Yeah. They've so got an accent. Confusing. I can't, I can't, I don't know the history of South Africa off the top of my head, but, uh, I immediately thought it was Australian or something like that until I kind of like figured out it was South Africa. Yeah, so but we're, we're learning stuff every day. We're, we're simple hillbillies in Eastern Kentucky. So that's right. We live I haven't seen life. I haven't seen too many uh, South African horror movies or anything. Fried Berry's another one, though. And the, and the dude that plays Fried Berry is actually in this, he, too. Yeah, he, to me, is the best part of this movie in terms of the cast. And I don't know why. It's just something about that guy's presence and his look. He's got a charisma about him, too. He really does. They really stumbled upon, like, some uh, gold mine, like, with him and just the way that he looks and acts. Uh, he plays two-bit in this, in this movie. And, um, so, but anyway, the, the rival gang is led by this guy named the rat King. And, um, basically by taking in this, this woman, they, uh, owe a debt to the rat King and his band of like, you know, this, this rival gang and the, they come to collect at some point and then, you know, there's a lot of bloodshed with that, but then that ends up being like, kind of like a, uh, team up between all of the gangs towards the end. Once they figure out like what's going yeah. on, the higher ups, the mayor, the police, they're trying to take everybody out. All the street people yeah. with this gas that they do call Viper, right? There's a couple, so, yeah. there's a couple of like throwbacks. You don't have the, yeah. the poisonous booze or anything, but they do promote it in this. So you see bottles of Tina fly Viper, um, from the original movie. And isn't there one scene where a guy drinks it and he's bubbles and sh bubbles up and shit. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of nods to different things in this movie too. And I can <laughs> talk about some of them like as we get towards the end, but like a couple of the funniest parts that I found in this movie too, were I don't know if, the version of this movie that we got is like the final version with all the mixed sound and everything. But if it is, that makes it even like more hilarious. I'm pretty sure thing. it is. Because like whenever they towards the end, like team together and they go after the government and they're after the mayor and all this stuff. Um, and they're going and storming the compound and they're shooting everybody. And stuff. <laughs> like what's killer about that is like half of the people have that Wilhelm scream or that scream, like, you know, the one that's really, really right. famous. That's like, been in movies for decades. Yeah. But then the other half of them have some sort of like Schwarzenegger thing where they're like, blah, blah. like when they get shot, they make like a Schwarzenegger sound. <laughs> I thought that was killer touch. <laughs> Whoever did that, like, or decided on that. It's amazing. There's uh, also um, a puppet that's used in this movie. And the, yeah, the characters, <laughs> and this is just uh, random as hell. Yeah. It right. is. Yeah, Sockle is the the character's name, and it's actually voiced by Ryan Kruger. And it's almost like when, because all of the you know the homeless people, and this is accurate, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm sure not 100 percent of homeless people are drug addicts, but a right. good a good amount of them probably are, or alcoholics, one or the other. So Sockle is kind of like the mythical mythical creature that they see when they're high, I guess, right? I, I think so. Like, <laughs> isn't Sockle? I thought Sockle was kind of meant to be like two bits 
uh, imaginary friend, and you don't know whether or not like it's real or if it's just like some sort of like I don't know version of like his like warped imagination or when he gets messed up or something like that. Yeah. And then the demise of I'm not going to give it away, but one of the main characters, you know, not everyone survives. It's fucking great. Like it's very gruesome and there's a lot of gratuitous just insanity in this body melting stuff, pus filled explosions everywhere. So and that's really what made Street Trash, you know, the cult phenomenon that it is, the original yeah. movie. So there's a ton of that in this. I was kind of amazed at how well that they did the effects because I really wasn't expecting them to be done as good from the very first scene of the movie where you see a guy kind of being experimented on and you know, he of course melts down and everything. Like I knew it was going to be good because it's all clearly like practical effects. Number one, a lot of squibs, a lot of huge like balloon squibs mm -hmm. and the shit that comes out of them too. Looks like paint. <laughs> like some yeah, sort of like Just paint. like the original. And, yeah. Movie, just like yeah. the, just like, you know, street track, but like, it's pretty amazing like the level of detail and it's, it far surpasses the original street trash in terms of that. But, um, and it's all throughout the film too. Like yeah. it doesn't just happen like a couple times. Like it's all the way throughout the film, just gore scenes after gore scenes and beheadings and explosions and meltdowns and all of that, that you would expect from a movie like this. And what's interesting too, is it's a lot of the same people, bloody disgustings involved in this as well. So, you know, a lot of incentivers and, you know, a lot of the same people that were working doing the Terrifier movies as well. So, I mean, I think they're definitely on to something here with, you know, these ultra gory throwbacks to, you know, some of the classic genre films of the day. And, you know, is this the best film of all time? No, but for fans of street trash, and why you love street trash as a movie. A lot of that stuff is in this movie. So you won't be disappointed with just tons and tons of that sickening, like gruesome melting goodness that you loved in the first movie. So there's definitely that the production quality on this is amazing too. It looks like it could be in theater, one of those movies that's in theaters. Now, there's no stars in this movie, really. There's yeah. nobody that any anyone would recognize. So it, you know, you can you can see why it's direct to streaming or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I had fun with it. I thought I actually thought it was, uh, you know, it, does it live up to the street trash name? I mean, I think it kind of does. I think it's respectable. There, when it comes to a lot of these remakes over the years most of the time it's just a cheap cash in or whatever and you can't really say that with a movie like street trash because it is a very like smaller fan base cult movie it's a cult movie for sure yeah. yeah like i mean there's very few people that know about street trash or outside of like you know big genre fans uh i mean i think i'll agree with you to the point of like I think that it did justice to the original Street Trash for sure, because that movie, you know, when you think about it, it's like, you know, what would you need to do to surpass that movie? You think like the acting performances in the original Street Trash right. were, were killer or anything like that. Like, what would you need to do is really just like up the ante on the gore and like the, the special effects, which I think that they did quite well in this movie, too. Uh, and you need a message in the film because the, there was a message in the original Street Trash too, which was centered around homeless people and, as well. And this one is maybe a little bit more thought out than than the original, maybe a little more heavy handed, I think, too. Uh, but, yeah, it works. Uh, the, the only issue that I have with this film, if I'm being honest, is a couple of the characters in it just did not seem to work. Uh, and I, I struggled to figure out like why they put certain characters in the movie. Like a character like two bit fits in this movie, right? Because that's like, that's the type of person that would exist in this universe to me. Mm -hmm. And, but like the, the female lead, I don't, I mean, I don't know. She didn't really do a whole lot and she wasn't really like interesting. I almost felt story. 
that they introduced too many like main cast members throughout. Like you should have stuck with the the main three that you began with, and maybe replaced one of those with with fried berry, um, and you would have had something there, right? But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of like you. the The character development in this is not the best, but again, the, the same could be said for the first movie as well. Yeah, um, well, that's what I was saying. Like, like you really don't. I mean. When you look back at that movie, there's nothing you can point to like performance wise. Be like, ah, that was you know, killer or whatever. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy this. Um, knowing what I know about you know modern horror fans and just the gratuitousness factor in this, people are going to go crazy because it is all throughout this movie, uh, very colorful blood and guts. The special effects part, there's no doubt that's amazing. But did you ever wonder, like, though, why is there, like, a Jewish rabbi-esque character in this fucking movie, too? And I kept wondering, like, is his voice ADR? Because his voice seemed like the only voice that was, like, out of, like, sync with Mm -hmm. the with the rest of the... the I'm not sure. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like... The chef character. The chef character, yeah. yeah. When you hear it, you're just like, something about that is just off somehow or another i don't know if it's just him doing like a really bad impression or like if that was adr or i'm not sure what it was but there was something about that that just was not like it's a very very stereotypical like he was saying a bunch of yiddish sayings and stuff like that throughout the movie and you're just kind of like what the hell is going on with that so i mean granted it's street trash it's not supposed to make a whole lot of sense but like it was a very interesting character to have in that movie i'll say that yeah um, and like we're saying, this is the follow up. Uh, Ryan Kruger did uh, Fried Berry a couple of years ago, had a pretty huge hit with that one. And um, coming back with Street Trash from 2024, it is coming out tomorrow from Screenbox and digitally. So I guess Voodoo, Amazon, wherever you go, iTunes, I guess you can get them from iTunes. Uh, street trash will be on there and i say it's definitely worth checking out if you're into the insane gratuitous myth baby of the original one it is along those same lines but they up it to like 11 yeah the the i agree with you the effect scenes are like take it to 11 on a marshall amp kind of thing um i will say that it is one of the better like independent kind of style remakes of one of these movies that I've seen. What an odd movie to remake too. If you think about it, Mm -hmm. like just out of nowhere that this movie comes out with a remake, but like, you know, in the grand scheme of a hundred remakes or reimaginings or re envisionings or anything like that, that I've seen you know, this one is actually fun and enjoyable and entertaining. Um, in in a lot of different ways so i gotta give it credit yeah so cineverse scream box coming out on digital tomorrow everybody check it out appreciate you checking out the review stay tuned for more creamy horror goodness over at deadpit.com I'd like to tell people to thumbs up the video, Uncle Bill. Would you? Yes. Thumbs it up with violence and fury and just l- love everything about it. You hit the heart button, then you hit the ass button, then you hit the go fuck yourself button. Follow that up with the I don't give a shit button. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpit.com. Simply the best horror shirt. On T Public, there are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills Have Eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're gonna love them. Shop.deadpit.com. Special thanks goes out to our supporters on Patreon. You know what kind of stuff you can get on Patreon, Uncle Bill, starting at only $1 a month? What's that? Access to every Dead Pit show since 2005. We got almost 
200 fan commentaries that we've done over the decades. We have a literal jukebox full of songs and thousands of reviews. I don't even know how many shows are up on there now that we've done over the years. Hundreds of thousands. You need to figure this out now and subscribe to us on Patreon and YouTube and Instagram and help us to one million. The, the road to a million subscribers starts today. So Dad Pit on Patreon.com join today. Tiers start at only a dollar, but I'd recommend at least the ten dollar tier. You can do fifty. The stock market's crashing around us, folks, but send us money. 